Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and welcome to another academic year. If you're a first year IB student, second year IB student, or even a university student, welcome uh, to academic year 2022 to 2023. This video will be part of a, a series of videos this year in looking at paper two exams, which uses real world examples that can also be applied to paper one, section B, where you have to apply a real world example, and also could provide insight into dissecting an article for an internal assessment. I wrote uh, paper two at the end of the last academic year um, using the following articles, which I will post into the information section of this video below with links to this article from CNBC, Saudi finance minister warns of growing global food crisis caused by the Ukraine war. Another article um, looking at how the impact of the Russian Ukrainian crisis or war on food security to Egypt. And another article, again from CNBC, Russia's war threatening the Middle East's food security, sparking warnings of riots, famine, and mass migration. So I use those articles to develop a type of paper two exam. And again, the nice thing about paper two is that it gives you examples that you can use on a paper one, section B, real world examples, and also paper twos help you uh, get in the habit of dissecting articles for kind of an internal assessment type of assessment, an internal assessment type of assessment. Paper two is usually an hour and 45 minutes. You choose one of uh, uh, two questions, I believe. I'd have to uh, double check that. Um, and so here we have some uh, snippets of information from those articles. So just a quick overview. Text A, Russian-Ukrainian wars, impact on Middle East, North African nations, also known as MENA. And you should be in the habit on a paper two to highlight, once you're able to, after your reading time, to highlight key snippets of information that could be used to support your reasoning. So here, Russia, Ukraine accounts for one third of the world's global wheat exports, provide the majority of the wheat for the MENA region. So they're supplying, they're the biggest supplier to that region. 95% of Ukraine's total grain, wheat and corn exports were shipped out via the Black Sea, but due to the war, that conduit was shut down, but just recently open, thanks to negotiations uh, between Russia and Ukraine mediated by Turkey. Russia is the world's number one exporter of wheat and the top exporter of fertilizer, okay? Text B, uh, with the reduction in the supply of wheat to MENA countries, Middle East, North African countries, that reduction supply would lead to rising prices and rising food price prices and inflation. So here we have information about inflation. Rising prices, this is a type of cost push inflation that you would study in macroeconomics. And this cost push inflation in food prices impacting 500 million people in the region. Wheat is a key food item for Egypt. This is important, as you'll see in a bit. 35 to 39 percent of the caloric intake per person in Egypt is wheat, and wheat imports usually accounts for about 62 percent. Inflation surged to 14.8 percent in 2021, and the main driver of that inflation was higher food prices. In addition, the UN says that food prices as of April are 34 percent higher than they were a year ago. Uh, 45 million people in 38 countries are now facing potential famine due to the rising prices and the reduced purchasing power of their low and likely fixed types of income. What about solutions? What solutions can these countries um, uh, pursue? Well, perhaps looking for alternatives. But the article highlights that alternative sources for crucial food imports is difficult when the food prices are rising. How can countries import alternatives when they those prices are also rising. And uh, what about producing your own food? Well, in the region, Middle East, North Africa, water is scarce. Uh, we're talking about desert uh, type of climate, uh, maybe experiencing less than 10 inches of rain per year. So that is a limitation to being able to grow food locally. Tech C uh, looks at consequences of this. Um, in Egypt's case, the Egyptian government spends $3 billion annually 
on wheat imports, and they have a subsidy program making food available for the local population. Uh, but that comes at a cost of the government. The, the subsidy program before the rising food price, about $3 billion for wheat subsidies, but that could double to $5.7 billion. And you're going to see how that's going to be useful in this particular video for the question we're going to tackle. So that's just a quick overview. And scrolling down, paper two typically starts with defining some key terms, in this case, defining scarcity, describing the characteristics of perfect competition, stating the formula for GDP. I don't have any uh, quantitative questions in this paper two, but on paper two, you would have quantitative questions. And for this video, we're going to focus on this question right here. All right, let's look at question B. It says using an appropriate market demand diagram. So the diagram we got, we're drawing just needs to illustrate the demand curve. We don't necessarily need to show demand and supply. Let's focus on demand and illustrate the relationship between the price and total revenue in that demand curve and explain the factors that determines the PED for food. And it highlights we can use information from text B, paragraphs two, three, four, and five. So I'm going to make some notes here. All right. This video is going to try to tackle that question. And I'm trying to understand what is the PED for food. I'm going to use the article to highlight a specific example. So I'm going to use wheat since the article discusses wheat in Egypt. So my graph, graph A, will be the market for wheat in Egypt, wheat as an example of food. And we're going to try to think about what is determining the price elasticity of demand. Some of those factors include number and closeness of substitutes. And text B, paragraphs 2 and 6, all right, text B, let's go back, paragraph 2 and 6, highlights that there's no close substitute, that wheat is really the dominant food intake for the Egyptian population. Wheat is a key food item in Egypt, 35 to 40 percent of the caloric intake per person. Uh, very, very dependent on that particular type of cereal grain. And it might be difficult for them to switch over to corn or some other type of uh, cereal grain because culturally, maybe their tastes and preferences is for this type of cereal grain. So I could use this type of quote here to support my reasoning for the PED being inelastic due to no close alternative um, for the Egyptian people. In addition, uh, we can also say that food is a necessity. All right, let me bring this back up. Paragraph two and six. So let's see paragraph six for a second. And in terms of alternatives, it states here in paragraph six, while countries will be looking for alternative sources for their crucial imports, that's difficult because the prices of those substitutes are also rising. So there's a lack of of substitutes. So that would mean that the PED, sorry, is relatively inelastic. All right. Lack of substitutes means that PED is relatively inelastic. So PED for food have a value less than one. In terms of necessities versus luxuries, food by definition is a necessity. You cannot live without it. And text B paragraph two would also highlight the Egyptians, 40% of their food intake is wheat food, wheat, and necessity. Length of time, text B, paragraph six, that paragraph mentioned that uh, there is water scarcity in the region. And so it would take time to perhaps find ways to um, irrigate rivers to produce more water or desalinize uh, salt water to produce more water. That takes time and just to grow food period takes time, time to plant it, time to harvest it. So that's a long run um, solution, but in the short run, it's going to be inelastic. Okay, so we know that our market demand curve is going to be inelastic, All right? So again, this video is highlighting. We can use these real world examples for paper one, section B, paper two, and it helps to understand an internal assessment. So let's go ahead and draw this. So the market demand for wheat would have a relatively inelastic curve, relatively vertical. So I'm going to exaggerate this here we're going to have this very vertical curve. I'm going to label this D1, and it's equal to my marginal benefit curve. 
And for higher level students, they also know that's equal to your average revenue, just for some review. And we're going to highlight a particular price. So we'll have price set, let's say it P1 and Q1. Here's P1, here is Q1. And that's, let's not forget to label our axes. This is the quantity of wheat demanded by the Egyptian population. And on the y-axis, we're measuring the price of wheat. So we have a particular price set. We can label this perhaps point A. And with the Russian-Ukrainian war reducing the supply, the global supply of wheat, we're seeing that the price is rising. So it's going from P1 to P2. And a reduction in the quantity demand from Q1 to Q2. So we see that the percent change in quantity demanded is less than the percent increase in price. Again, the formula for PED is all right, the percent change in quantity demanded over the percent change in price. And if the percent change in price is greater than the percent change in the quantity of demand, that means that the PED has a value that is less than one. What does that mean? For example, let's assume, let's just assume that PED for wheat, let's say that it is equal to 0 0.6. So PED is equal to uh, the percent change in quantity matter over percent change in price. So that means that's 0 0.6 over 1. This is the percent change in quantity demanded. This is the percent change in price. So if price increases by 1%, then the quantity of demand will decrease by 0.6%. So that's what it means that's less than 1. That, uh, people will continue to buy, maybe you lose a few people or they reduce their quantity of consumption slightly, but they continue to consume even if there's a dramatic increase in price. So we're moving along the demand curve from point A to point B. It's a movement along. And to discuss total revenue, I'll label some areas. There are A and B and area C. So I've drawn the model and I now need to analyze it in the context of Egypt. And I'm gonna use uh, a paragraph to illustrate a particular point. So if I scroll down and read the next text, this information here is quite useful. The Egyptian government has been, is spending $3 billion annually on wheat imports, and that can double to 5.7 billion. All right. So I'm going to make a little note here that the Egyptian government government is spending approximately three billion dollars on wheat imports. And that can increase to 5.7, almost double 5.7 billion, 5.7 billion dollars. Okay, dramatic increase, doubling in price. So that's the idea that's happening here. All right, so uh, starting off, graph A, market for wheat in Egypt. On the x-axis, we're measuring quantity. On the y-axis, we're measuring price. We have a downward sloping demand curve equal to uh, demand, D1, equal to our marginal benefit, equal to our average revenue. We have a price set at P1 with a quantity demanded at Q1 uh, at point A. And due to the Russian-Ukrainian war and the reduction of wheat being exported from Ukraine and Russia, the global supply is decreased, leading to a rise in the price for wheat, which impacts Egypt. Price has increased from P1 to P2, and led to a decrease from Q1 to Q2. We notice that the percent change in price 
is greater than the percent change in quantity demanded, meaning that the PED value for wheat and food in general is less than one because of the determinants of PED, including the number and closeness of substitutes for the Egyptian people due to cultural tastes, very uh, dependent on wheat as their main food intake, according to text B, paragraphs two and six, due to the lack of substitutes or alternatives for uh, countries to find alternatives in the global market because it's not just wheat prices are rising, but many cereal grain prices are rising as substitutes for wheat. And number two, food by definition is a necessity as explained in text B, paragraph two, and also uh, length of time. It takes time to uh, plant the seeds, to sow them, to harvest them. And in text B, paragraph six, it highlights that water scarcity uh, makes it very difficult to grow food. Um, and so in the short run, the PED is less than one. What about the relationship between price and total revenue? Well, when we're at point A, we notice that total revenue, the initial total revenue one is equal to P1 times Q1, which is equal to areas A plus B. So looking in text C, we see, for example, the Egyptian government is spending $3 billion. Price times quantity could be the value of areas A and B could be approximately $3 billion for the Egyptian government in their spending for their wheat subsidy program. All right, because spending equals revenue. The Egyptian government's spending is equal to the revenue earned by the firms and nations that are exporting that wheat. So $3 billion worth of revenue due to the government spending of Egypt, P1 times Q1. Then we notice that as price rises from P1 to P2, total revenue increases. So here we can highlight that total revenue 2 is equal to P2 times Q2, which is equal to areas C plus A. And that could have a value that's equal to, according to the article for the Egyptian government, $5.7 billion worth of wheat imports versus total revenue one, which is equal to about $3 billion worth of wheat imports. So that area is seen here. So again, it follows that the PED is less than one because when the PED is less than one, there's a direct relationship between price and total revenue. As price rises for wheat, total revenue for the firms exporting and selling wheat increases, which we see here. Firms that used to make $3 billion in their wheat exports to Egypt are almost doubling their revenues to 5.7 billion Egyptian government spending is equal to their revenue. Okay. Um, there are other vi videos that explain this, but here I'm just using a, a real world example. Again, you can use this for paper one, section B, if you had this type of question. Paper two, this is good practice. And it also helps you with an internal assessment in seeing the real world and applying these types of concepts in an IA um, type of assessment. And that's it. Uh, I will, in the next video, look at the next question in this paper too, and the next series of questions, and we'll collectively use all of these models to understand what is currently happening uh, with the Russian-Ukrainian war and its impact on global food prices and how that's leading to cost push inflation globally. Again, thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to comment, and uh, don't forget to subscribe.